Hi, I'm Matt, and in this episode, we're going to be connecting our GPS units to our flight controller boards. Now, it doesn't matter if you have a V1 or a V2 board, which we've been covering in this series, because we're going to be doing them both in this single part of the series on connecting up and setting up iNav for a flying wing. So with that said, let's move ourselves uh, forwards now. Uh, you'll notice on my screen, or as you can see on your screen in front of you, I've got two GPS units and I've got two flight controller boards. One is the V1 and one is the V2. We're going to be doing both of these in this episode. Now, before we do that, we need to, uh, in fact, I've been here, I got it, didn't do it right the first time round, so I need to just undo my colours a moment. Uh, there we go, sorted. Right, for the V1 board, uh, let's start with the easy pins. Now, the easy pins are the TX and the RX, and the good news about these is that they're really simple, straightforward because it doesn't matter if you get those the wrong way around because it will either work or it won't. Now, which pins am I talking about? If I grab the flight control board, grab a pencil, and let me just show you on here, there you go. I'm talking about these bottom two pins down here, okay? That's RX and TX6, uh, and I'll flip back to the screen uh, so you can see what we're talking about, RX, and TX, okay? The orientation of those pins, it does not matter which way around we get those. However, what is critically important, and I'm just gonna draw this up on your screen for you, so let me go and change uh, the color on the pen, is that we need to connect up five volts to that pin, which is in the middle, one, two, three up from the bottom, and we also need to connect grains, which I'll use black for, on the fourth one up as well. Now, where is that on our flight controller? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go and grab the red and black connector we've got here. And as I said, it's a, it's one, two, three, up. There we go. So I'm just quickly visually checking. One, two, three pins up from the bottom. And then we've got red going in the first pin up and then the black in the next one up. And I'll put that on a side view so you can see where I've been and connected it on mine. And quickly just looking back at the picture. So third pin up is five volts and then we've got grain on the fourth pin up in the middle row, uh, which is what I've been selected. Now when it on the V1 board, we've got, and again, if you, I'm assuming you followed along from the previous episode for wiring it up for the V1, uh, is that we've, that I know that these two wires here are the right wires. And uh, to be honest, it doesn't matter uh, if I've plugged them in that way round or if I've plugged them in that way round because it will either work or it won't. So that's the V1 board setup. Let's go and do the V2 setup. Uh, so I've got the GPS unit, which I showed you how to wire up in a previous episode. All I'm going to do is put that on the camera, see if it'll focus. Oh, maybe we're a bit close. There we go. Kind of close. Just need to make sure those pins are the right way up and it was the wrong way round. So I'm going to have a look, get this board the right way round. So I've got the PWM pins here uh, and we need to mash this in to the top connector. Now, do check that in there, that I can see if I can get this to focus for you. There, can you see the pins are at the top? So I need to grab this connector and make sure that it's the right way around. There we go. And then I'm gonna connect that in to the top connector uh, on here, like so, and then push that in. And again, I'll leave a nice little picture on the board of the board on your screen for you so you can see that how I've got mine wired up. So that's the GPS unit for the V2 board. And then I'll quickly recap for the V1 board. So I'll get my pencil out. So like I said, the third pin up, one, two, three is live. Okay, which we've got, that's five volts. And then we've got ground after that. And then these bottom two, it doesn't matter which way round you get those two. So as long as they're connected to the bottom two pins on here, that's fine. Uh, and the reason being, like, like I've said a couple of times already, doesn't matter if these two are the wrong way around uh, because it will either work or it won't work. So let's tell you what, let's move that onto one side. I've already got iNav running here in the background. Uh, where's the USB socket? And again, you'll see me going very gingerly with the USB socket, just giving it some respect and noticing that it's very light and very small and we shouldn't ram the stuff in it. Right, iNav's been connected. We need to set this up, the, the flight controller board up now uh, for to tell it that it's got a GPS unit. Now, the thing is, this doesn't matter if you're using a V1 or a V2. So let's go to our ports tab and we're just gonna make sure that UART6, scroll across 
Over here on the right hand side we have GPS enabled and it's set to 115200. If it's not set to not enabled, so we got the blue tick on there, uh, and it's not set to 115200, change yours and press save and reboot in the bottom right hand corner. Then go to the configuration tab on the left hand side, scroll down and we are looking for the GPS section. So we're going to enable GPS navigation for telemetry. We've got it set to U blocks uh, and I'm going to set ground assistant type to uh, auto detect. So we're going to let the board sort it out itself. Now I've been and made a change. If you've been and made a change, press save and reboot. Wait for it to connect. Sooner or later, oh, I might have to click the button, damn it. Right, anyway, uh, good news. Can you see up at the top here, we've got a blue GPS icon. That means it, the board knows that we've, already, we've got a GPS connected. Now, the question is, is the board working or not? Well, first things, if we have a quick look down here, we can see that there's a blue light on the top. Well, that's happy days. And we also didn't get any magic pixie smoke, so we must have got it wired up the right way around. That's always a good start. Let's go down to the GPS and fantastic, this one is working. Now, how do I know it's working? Or how do you know it's working? Total messages, that's the number. You see that number is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's happy days, your GPS unit is working. If we walked outside with this setup right now, and because I'm here in a nuclear bunker, is that it would go and work, brilliant. Now the thing to note is that if you do go and take your board outside and you're not seeing a GPS fix, just wait. Remember that it's probably the first time it's been powered up, probably the first time it's been outdoors, and it can take a couple of minutes to get a GPS fix. And once you have got a GPS fix, and if you've got it connected via USB and you've got iNav running, uh, maybe you've taken a laptop outside with you, uh, is that in this current GPS location section in here, you'll see a map and you'll just see the, the pin on the map getting to the right location. Now. What happens if that you get no messages? Well, chances are you're not using a V2 board because I showed you how to wire that one up. If you're using a V1 board and you're getting no messages and that's just saying it's staying at zero, unplug your USB connector, take these two bottom wires, which were the RX and TX, and then you turn them around and then plug them back in again on the bottom two pins, connect your USB connector back up again, go through those settings, just make sure we have the settings which we covered a few moments ago, we're working. Come down to the GPS tab and ta-da, you should start seeing total messages in the top left-hand corner. So that's classed as happy days. Um, that's your GPS can you unit fixed. We are really close to be, being able to fly. So for myself, Matt, I'll see you in the next episode. Cheerios.